Okay, so let's talk about chlamydia. Okay, again, this is a bacteria. All right, so this is a bacteria that's chlamydia trichomonas. Okay, uh, this is the most common bacterial sexually transmitted diseases that we see in new cases right now. Okay, the way you can get this is obviously sexual content and contact, and we've been talking about such transmitted disease. But I also want to also mention that they can also get this uh, a newborn baby, or at least a delivering baby. So you get perinatal transmission, but it doesn't cross the placenta barrier. These, these bacteria are just too big to do that. However, they can go, as the baby, if, if the mother has chlamydia in the vagina and the baby goes through the vagina, this is where uh, the baby can get that on itself. Uh, it can cause blindness in the baby, or even uh, the bacteria goes down to the lungs and causes pneumonia. So we usually do that. Um, a lot of times what we do is, um, just as a precaution, maybe it was just late uh, and we didn't pick it up, or maybe it was just a small a titer of uh, bacteria that might be in the mother's uh, vagina. It's a pretty easy thing to prevent in a child, and what they do is as soon as the baby is born, they immediately, just routine, just immediately, they put cream, uh, antibiotic cream in the eye just to make sure that there was any bacteria that, when the baby went through the vaginal canal, that they used that to protect it. Okay, more of a prophylaxis sort of thing. So that's just chlamydia. Um, most people are asymptomatic. About 75% don't even know they have it. Uh, we check this with every pregnant woman, and we check this routinely on a first visit. Okay, and we usually also do it um, just before, um, uh, maybe like uh, four weeks before they're born, uh, or their due date, we, uh, we do this. So um, there is, if there is symptoms, we usually see like a yellow-green vaginal or penile uh, discharge. Uh, sometimes it's like a whitish, any kind of discharge, you would start questioning it, right? Um, it can cause cervicitis with the woman, erythritis for the man or the woman, um, and epididymitis in the man, okay? Um, but what we're also uh, mainly concerned about is that this is the leading cause of pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. And we talked about this, so I don't want to spend too much time on that, but this PID, which could only be get, you could only get PID from a sexual transmitted disease, namely chlamydia, or the next one we'll talk about is gonorrhea, and that can cause adhesions within the pelvic cavity and that can also destroy the fallopian tubes and cause infertility. And that's what we're concerned about with this. Okay? Uh, the diagnosis is a simple, just a, a cervical culture, all right, or urethral culture in a male. Um, and the treatment is just antibiotics, something we call di doxycycline. Now, usually, I just want to mention too, usually uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea, they're like buddies, okay? Um, Sometimes if we get the chlamydia and we also check for gonorrhea and gonorrhea was negative, we still treat for gonorrhea. We believe that in most cases, uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia uh, come together. They are partners. So we will treat. They need two different antibiotics. But if you have chlamydia, we will also treat for gonorrhea because maybe the culture for some reason didn't pick up enough. But chances are it's probably there too. So we usually will treat gonorrhea um, uh, and chlamydia the same. There are two different antibiotics, but that's what happens with that. Okay? So again, just to um, reiterate a few things about pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, it's infection that it occurs at the cervix and it ascends, right? So again, just a reiteration on this thing. So this is your uterus. Here's the vagina. Here's the fallopian tubes. So what I'm saying over here is that, again, penis goes in here, here's your uterus or womb, here's the two fallopian tubes, there's the ovaries, okay? Uh, a penis would normally um, come in here, would never go where the baby is, okay? And if there is chlamydia, that happens at the cervix. That's why we would actually culture the cervix because that's where it usually will um, stay around. The thing is with this, this chlamydia, 
or gonorrhea for that matter, you go connected, can actually go through here, remember there's an opening here, and can set up camp elsewhere. And this will cause a lot of scarring. If there's some chlamydia that happens on a fallopian tube, this fallopian tube could be pulled up, right? It could go up like this. There's a lot of scarring is happening over here, attaching to the intestines or something like that, and someone's attaching here, and then it kind of contracts and pulls that fallopian tube up. Now, the sperm is unable to get through that narrow passage. It gets stenosed. Or it gets so worse than stenosed, it gets clogged, it gets blocked. So that nothing can get through that area. If it happens here, there's a good chance it could happen here also. So that's how pelvic inflammatory disease causes um, infertility. Depending on where it's being pulled up, it might not be here. Maybe it's attached to a part of an intestine here, and your uterus over here, or another part of the intestines over here. It could be pulling on things, and when it pulls on things, it's all scarring. That can actually cause a lot of pelvic pain. And because this is a bacterial reason, they get fevers with this, maybe a vaginal discharge because of cervicitis, okay? Um, and you get all these adhesions and scarring, okay? So the only way you can get pelvic inflammatory disease is a sexually transmitted disease, okay? Um, it gets a little bit, a um, little tough when you talk to, and I had this case, uh, girl comes in, she's, let's say, 14 years old, and she comes in the emergency room and her parents take her there because she has so much pain in her, in her pelvic area. So we do a test, we find out she's got pelvic inflammatory disease, now we got this issue where, uh, okay, you gotta tell her parents that she's got pelvic inflammatory disease and they're gonna ask, well, how did she get that? Now you gotta open the can of worms because here you have this 14-year-old girl um, that you have to explain to the parents that, and it, the thing is, that's what's so difficult about this autonomy um, with the, uh, I can't tell, parents about what's going on, but they're paying the bill, they want to know what's happening to her daughter, why is she going to be in the hospital, that kind of stuff. Um, so you have to tell them, you know, you got to tell them that, you know, that, you know, the only way you can get this is sexually transmitted. So that opens up a can of worms. So I'm just saying, there's a lot of times, um, you know, medicine is not cut and dry. It's, it's, it's easier said than done, um, but you're going to be, you know, if you're going to be a nurse, you're going to have to deal with a lot of this kind of stuff, okay? So um, just open up that, uh, uh, that little conversation with that, all right? So pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, kind of like what I drew over here, you see all the scarring that happens over here, it can be attached to the, um, uh, to the intestines, can attached to the uh, fallopian tubes, could obstruct the fallopian tube, um, cause all those kinds of problems. Um, this is, it looks like a big spider web, that's basically what all the scarring happens. Okay. Um, and this is um, another picture. Uh, I showed this once before, but again, here's the, so now you, uh, you put a scope, what I did with this is a picture I took. Uh, you put a, a scope in and you're looking down into the pelvic cavity. So what's going to happen here, here's the uterus up here, here's the fallopian tube, the end of the fallopian tube is around here with the ovary around here. Bladder, urinary bladder is up there. <coughs> but you should be able to clearly see the fallopian tube here, but you've got all this like sheet of membrane that's happening here. That's not really a membrane. Those are all adhesions. So um, that's what happens. Actually, pulling on things, as you can see on there, you see the intense, the intense uh, uh, architecture that's happening because of all the pulling. Makes sense. So that's uh, chlamydia and PID, or pelvic inflammatory disease. All right, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea um, is a gram-negative uh, bacteria, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, this is also referred to as the clap. I'm not too sure how they got that name on there, but if you ever hear uh, saying that, oh, she's got the clap or he's got the clap, they're talking about gonorrhea, okay? Um, the way you can get this is the same way as chlamydia. Like I said, they kind of work together. They're partners over here. 
So obviously sex in contact, sexual contact, and perinatal transmission, again, gonorrhea is just too big to actually go through the placenta barrier, so it doesn't um, uh, go to the baby when the baby's in the utero, right, inside the uterus. Um, but if the baby goes through the vaginal canal, you do a vaginal delivery, um, and you know that they have gonorrhea, um, the baby can get it and can cause blindness. Uh, it's not so great that it would actually cause pneumonia, but, you know, blindness is still pretty bad. So that's what happens with that. Okay? Uh, they get, they can be asymptomatic, just the same way as um, um, chlamydia is. All right? They may get this yellow, greenish discharge. You get this cervicitis, erythritis, epididymitis. Uh, can all happen. PID is a big thing, just as much as with chlamydia. Uh, but I also want to mention, too, that with gonorrhea, um, this one uh, can also cause arthritis later on in, in life, okay, where you have um, uh, multiple joint inflammations because the, uh, the bacteria has gone into the bloodstream and has caused that. All right, so that's what that happens. Again, it's pretty much the same. So you do a culture, cervical or urethral culture for the male. Uh, antibiotics, uh, and this one, like I said, you just cure it with, with antibiotics. Um, the like I said, chlamydia and gonorrhea kind of work together, so we will treat for both, even if gonorrhea was negative and chlamydia was positive, or if gonorrhea was positive and chlamydia was negative, we still treat them and they will work together. Okay? And uh, this is just showing you some pictures of what that discharge may look like. All right, you can see this like yellowish uh, area, yellow greenish uh, um, uh, discharge happening on the male and on the female. You can see it over here. It's kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't say it's watery, but it can be watery. Okay, but that's what that is. talk about condylomata acuminata. Ooh, big word. Okay. These are gener um, genital warts. Um, this is also known as venereal warts. And this is due to our friend, or maybe not, uh, the human papilloma virus. Like I said, there's about 80 different strands. Most of the strands will cause some sort of wart. Uh, not just in the genital area, but it can also have any warts that might be on your hand, on your back. It's that old saying about kissing a frog that has nothing to do. They don't have the human Babylon virus. You kiss a frog, you get warts. No. Uh, it's mostly due to this virus over here. Okay. Like I said, a few of them, four I know of, I think they're looking at maybe two other ones, but four strains out of 80 cause uh, cervical cancer or penile cancer. Okay. The routes that you can get this is sexual contact, or if the um, if the wart is bleeding and you're bleeding and you touch that area, that can also cause uh, it to uh, pass on that way. Okay, um, so that's what happens with this. Now keep in mind, human papilloma virus is the most common sexually transmitted disease that we have in the United States. Okay. About 60 to 80% are affected, but keep in mind, you may have it in you, uh, especially with a lot of women. If the warts are inside the vagina, they might not even know they, they have it. Um, 60 to 80%, it's probably much higher than that because it's people, you know, you don't even know if you have it or not, that kind of thing, right? That, that issue. Um, this is not something that you can blame your partner about, okay? This is something that... Um, you know, you could have got, you know, decades ago with someone else, and then it's showing up now, you know. Uh, more of the bacterial ones, especially chlamydia and gonorrhea, that's pretty safe to say you got it recently. Um, but the viral ones, you can't put the blame on someone because um, you could have had it, uh, you know, years ago, okay, and you not even know about it. So the warts um, can be just one. Or it could look like a cauliflower, and I'll show you pictures of that, okay? Uh, they're not painful. Uh, the diagnosis is usually clinical. If you just look at it and say, oh, I know what that is. If there's some question about what it is, they'll take, take a biopsy, okay? So it's pretty straightforward on that. Um, so how do you prevent that? Well, 
we talked a little bit about this when we uh, dealt with the cervical cancer stuff, but they have this HPV vaccine. You probably see it all over the, the TV commercials and stuff. Gardner Cell is a good example of this. It's three doses. It's only for the strains that cause cancer, not for the warts. Okay? So that's why I spent more time talking about it over there. It's not for the warts. Um, if it was for all 80 strains, then the three doses would probably cost, I'm guessing, anywhere from five to $10,000. dollars are just doing all the strains. You're not going to die with warts. It may not look so pleasant, but you're not going to die from the warts. But you can die from the cancer. So they just want to make sure that they came up with the vaccine to prevent the cancer, not so much the warts. So do keep that in mind. And in indications right now, and this is 2019, is that females, they want to give the doses between 11 and 26 years old. Males who are heterosexual, same thing, 11 to 26. But males who are homosexual, they will do it up to 22 years. I don't know the rationale about this, um, but that's what they do with that. Okay? Um, treatment, there's a lot of different things you can do with the warts. I'm just talking about the warts mainly here. Um, is that if, cosmetically, if you want to freeze it, we do something called cryotherapy. These are all uh, mostly um, uh, things that you could do in the office, unless it's really extensive, like a gigantic cauliflower that's there. Um, but they could do cryotherapy, you could freeze it, you could put this topical medication, which is almost like an acid. Um, the thing is, when you do this versus this. You can also laser and surgical. These get a little bit more uh, tedious for this. So these are the more common things. Freezing works one time and that's it. They just, we just go in to the area, we freeze the area uh, inside the vagina, if that's where it is, um, and it's all taken care of. The disadvantage about this is that there's usually a watery discharge. Not long, maybe about three or four days, a watery discharge from there. A lot of women don't like that, but it's a one-time deal, it's done. The topical medication, we would put it on, it's like a little acid, it doesn't really burn per se, um, but they don't have much of a, um, uh, a side effect there. There's no discharge that comes out of it. The only thing is, we have to put this on once a week for about seven to nine weeks. So you always have to come into the uh, doctor's office for us to put that on and that kind of thing. So. Like I said, with any kind of treatments, medications, there's always side effects, and it's different for each individual what's best for them, okay, what they would withstand. So that's what that is. All right, so let's look at some of these pictures, okay? All right, so um, like I said, it, it, they're pretty self-explanatory, right? So I'm not going to go into that. You can see all the different things over here. Um, here's obviously two penises. This is vaginas over here, okay? And this is also a, an anal area, okay? Especially if there's, you, you can't be, um, uh, you got to be very wise to all this kind of stuff, all right? Uh, what you may do in the bedroom is not exactly what everybody else does, and this is what you see in there. So, we have to think that people have anal sex, and that's how they're getting this. You could also have like comedial pharyngitis. There's oral sex. So you gotta think of all these different things, okay? So that's um, a little bit about um, this, all right? 